Understanding the basics of personal finance can literally change your life. It's not about getting rich quick schemes, it's about taking control of your money so you can live with less stress and more freedom. Let's be real for a second. Have you ever felt like you're constantly playing catch up with your finances? Like no matter how hard you work, it's never quite enough? You're not alone. Millions of people feel the exact same way but it doesn't have to be this way. In this video I'm breaking down 10 basic financial tips that every single person should know. We're talking actionable advice you can start using today to improve your financial well-being. A budget is the foundation of good financial health. It's not about restricting yourself, it's about understanding where your money is going and making sure it aligns with your priorities. Think of it like a roadmap for your money. You wouldn't drive across the country without a GPS, would you? Your budget is your financial GPS, guiding you towards your goals. Creating a budget doesn't have to be complicated. Start by tracking your income and expenses for a month. You can use a spreadsheet, a budgeting app, or even just a notebook. Once you have a clear picture of your cash flow, you can start making adjustments. Identify areas where you can cut back on unnecessary expenses. Maybe it's eating out less, finding a cheaper phone plan, or canceling subscriptions you don't use. Every dollar you save is a dollar you can put towards your financial goals. Whether it's paying off debt, investing, or that dream vacation you've been eyeing, Remember, a budget isn't a one-time thing, it's an ongoing process. Your income and expenses will fluctuate over time, so it's important to review and adjust your budget regularly. Saving money is crucial for financial security, but it can be tough to do consistently. That's where automation comes in. By automating your savings, you can make it effortless and ensure you're consistently putting money aside. One of the easiest ways to automate your savings is to set up a direct deposit from your checking account to your savings account. Decide on an amount you're comfortable saving each month even if it's just a small percentage of your income. You can gradually increase this amount over time as your income grows. Another powerful savings strategy is to take advantage of employer-sponsored retirement plans like a 401k. These plans often come with employer matching contributions, which is essentially free money. Make sure you're contributing enough to get the full employer match. If you're self-employed or your employer doesn't offer a retirement plan, consider opening an individual retirement account IRA. IRAs offer tax advantages that can help you grow your savings faster. The key to saving is to start early and be consistent. Debt can be a major financial burden and it's something you want to avoid as much as possible. Of course not all debt is created equal. There's good debt like a mortgage on a rental property and then there's bad debt like high interest credit card debt. The key is to be mindful of the debt you're taking on and to use credit responsibly. One of the biggest mistakes people make is using credit cards for impulse purchases they can't afford. Before you swipe your card, ask yourself if you absolutely need this item and if you can pay off the balance in full when the bill arrives. If the answer to either of these questions is no, then don't buy it. Another important aspect of managing debt is to pay your bills on time. Late payments can result in late fees, penalty APRs, and damage your credit score. Set up reminders or automate your payments to avoid missing due dates. If you're struggling with credit card debt, create a plan to pay it off as quickly as possible. Consider using the debt snowball method, where you focus on paying off your smallest debt first, or the debt avalanche method, where you prioritize the debt with the highest interest rate. Life is full of surprises and not all of them are good. An emergency fund is your financial safety net, there to protect you from unexpected expenses like medical bills, car repairs, or job loss. Having an emergency fund can mean the difference between weathering a financial storm and going into debt. So how much should you have in your emergency fund? A good rule of thumb is to have three to six months worth of living expenses saved up. This may seem like a lot, but remember you don't have to build it overnight. Start by setting a realistic savings goal even if it's just $50 or $100 per month. As you get used to saving you can gradually increase this amount. Consider opening a separate savings account specifically for your emergency fund. This will help you avoid dipping into it for non-emergency expenses. Investing is one of the most powerful ways to build wealth over time and the earlier you start, the better. The magic of compound interest means that your money can grow exponentially over time. When you invest your money, it has the potential to earn interest and dividends. But here's the cool part, that interest and dividends can then earn their own interest and dividends and so on. It's like a snowball effect for your money. Even if you can only invest a small amount each month starting early allows you to take advantage of compound growth for a longer period. There are countless ways to invest your money, from stocks and bonds to real estate and cryptocurrency. The best investment strategy for you will depend on your individual financial goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon. If you're new to investing, consider starting with a low-cost index fund or exchange-traded fund ETF. These funds offer instant diversification by investing in a basket of assets like stocks or bonds that track a specific market index. Your credit score is a three-digit number that represents your credit worthiness or how likely you are to repay your debts. 
Lenders use your credit score to determine whether to approve you for loans, credit cards, and even rental applications. A higher credit score means you're considered a lower risk borrower, which can translate into lower interest rates and better loan terms. Several factors contribute to your credit score, including your payment history, credit utilization ratio, length of credit history, types of credit used, and new credit inquiries. You can check your credit report for free once a year from each of the three major credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Make sure you review your credit report regularly for errors and inaccuracies. If you find any errors, dispute them with the credit bureau immediately. Setting financial goals. What's important to you? Financial goals give you something specific to work towards and help you stay motivated on your financial journey. Your financial goals should be tailored to your individual values and aspirations. Do you want to buy a house, retire early, travel the world? Once you have a clear idea of what you want to achieve, you can start breaking down your goals into smaller, more manageable steps. Short-term goals are goals you can achieve in a year or less, like paying off a credit card or saving for a down payment on a car. Long-term goals are goals that will take several years or even decades to achieve, like buying a house or retiring comfortably. It's important to have a mix of short-term and long-term goals to keep you motivated and on track. Write down your goals and track your progress regularly. This will help you stay accountable and make adjustments to your plan as needed. Fees can eat away at your savings and investments over time, so it's important to be mindful of the fees you're paying and look for ways to minimize them. One of the biggest culprits for hidden fees is financial institutions. Banks and credit unions often charge monthly maintenance fees, ATM fees, overdraft fees and more. Shop around and compare fees from different institutions to find the best deals. When it comes to investing fees can also take a big bite out of your returns. Mutual funds and ETFs for example, charge expense ratios to cover the costs of managing the fund. Look for funds with low expense ratios to maximize your returns. Another area where you may encounter fees is when working with financial advisors. Some advisors charge hourly rates, while others charge a percentage of assets under management. Make sure you understand how your advisor is compensated and if their fees are reasonable. Insurance is essential for protecting yourself and your loved ones from financial hardship in the event of an accident, illness, or other unforeseen circumstances. There are many different types of insurance including health insurance, car insurance, home insurance, life insurance, and disability insurance. The type and amount of insurance you need will depend on your individual circumstances such as your age, health, lifestyle, and assets. Health insurance is crucial for covering the costs of medical expenses. If you're employed, your employer may offer health insurance benefits. If not, you can purchase health insurance through the health insurance marketplace. Car insurance is mandatory in most states and covers damages or injuries caused by a car accident. Home insurance protects your home and belongings from damage or theft. Life insurance provides financial protection for your loved ones in the event of your death. Disability insurance replaces a portion of your income if you become unable to work due to an injury or illness. The world of personal finance is constantly evolving so it's important to make continuous financial education a priority. There are countless resources available to help you expand your financial knowledge, from books and articles to podcasts and online courses. One of the best ways to learn about personal finance is to read books by financial experts. Some great books to get you started include Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey and Your Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin and Joe Dominguez. Podcasts are another great way to learn about personal finance on the go. Some popular personal finance podcasts include the Dave Ramsey Show, Planet Money, and Choose 5. There are also many online courses available that can teach you about specific aspects of personal finance, such as investing, budgeting, or real estate. Remember, financial literacy is an ongoing journey, not a destination. By continuously educating yourself about personal finance, you'll be empowered to make informed financial decisions and achieve your financial goals. There you have it, 10 basic financial tips that can truly make a difference in your life. Remember, personal finance is a journey, not a race. It's about making small, consistent changes over time that add up to big results. Start by implementing one or two of these tips today. Once you feel comfortable, gradually incorporate more into your routine. Don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. There are many resources available, from financial advisors to credit counseling agencies. The most important thing is to take that first step towards financial well-being. What financial tip resonated with you the most? Let me know in the comments below. I'm excited to hear your thoughts.